Over the years, Subaru has unveiled a bunch of awesome looking concept cars that previewed what their upcoming production cars would look like, but many times the final design never really lived up to the promises made with the concept. For the 2025 model year, we now have a refreshed Forester, and this time Subaru decided to keep things simple. They told the designers it's not necessary to have four different shoulder lines and a complex angle on every single single body surface and the result is a Forester with proportions just like the old one but with surfaces that's been polished clean from many unnecessary lines and creases. However, my question is, is it too polished? Is there any Subaru DNA left? So let's jump in and talk about the design of the refreshed 2025 Subaru Forester and let's see what's what. Let's have a look at what's new with the 2025 Subaru Forester in this article from Car and Driver. I'm going to link it down in the description. So, the 2025 Subaru Forester debuts a new look but is similar underneath. It's claimed to be quieter and more responsive than before, but the 2.5 liter flat four remains the only option for now. And I'm going to let you know why that is. There is actually a hybrid coming in next uh, for the 2026 model year which is pretty strange, but more on that in just a minute. So Subaru says that the 2025 Forester will start reaching US dealerships next spring. It does have a new sheet metal, as you can see. I can't wait to jump in and compare this to the old one from front side and rear, and also the interior in Photoshop in just a minute as well. You have a stiffer chassis, a bigger infotainment screen, obviously that's the trend these days, and a redesigned interior. So you have five different trim levels to choose from. You have the base, premium, sport, limited, and touring. And we expect a wilderness trim and a hybrid option to be added further down the road. The Forester's body panels are smoothed out around the headlights. You also have a new grille that extends its edges to better highlight the arrow-shaped LED headlights. And there was also another trend of the decade that's implemented here that they didn't have in the current Forester in the front end. Despite its boxy shape, Forester does have some arrow tricks along its flat flanks, including a new air vent at the back of the wheel opening. You can barely see that right here, but there is an opening in this plastic cladding that we have in the front end. They say it's 10% stiffer for 2025, and the ride be firmer and more controlled on the new chassis, but also claims to be quieter, and that was sort of a critique of the current Forester that it is pretty loud, specifically in high weight speed, so this will definitely help that. So you have the same 2.5 liter boxer engine, and the four cylinder makes 180 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque, which is actually down a two ho horsepower from uh, the 2023 model year. You have a CVT transmission, which you can shift manually. And I just reviewed the Subaru Ascent on the SketchMonkey channel, where I used the paddles, and it actually works pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it feels, it doesn't really feel like a CVT when you drive this specific transmission. If you want to go and check out the review, I'm going to link it down in the description, or just search the SketchMonkey Ascent and that video will come up. And you also have all-wheel drive as standard. You do have some cool gold or bronze wheels here, 19 inches for the Touring model, while the base models get 17 and 18 inches. On the inside, you do have dual-zone automatic clim climate control as standard, which is nice. And on the Touring trim, you now have cooled and heated seats. Further in the interior, the old screen was 7 inches, which is also the standard on the base model in the new one, but you can upgrade it to 11.6 inches if you want to. No uh, info on pricing here, but the current Forester starts at $28,390. This is expected to be a little bit more expensive than that. So the interesting thing here is the Subaru does not have a hybrid in 2023, while all the other competitors have a hybrid options for, for, for their vehicles. But but Subaru confirms that a confirms that a Forester hybrid is coming for 2026. So finally, we're getting a hybrid for this. I think this is one of these cars that ne definitely needs to have a hybrid. And here you can also see this air vent that they put in the new Forester right here, cut out in the plastic of the wheel. Subaru did offer the previous generation Forester with its e-boxer hybrid powertrain in Europe 
but it never made its way over here. Pretty strange in my opinion, because all of the other rivals, as you can see these ones right here, all over hi uh, hybrid powertrains. So I'm really glad to see that it's actually coming to this new, uh, I think this is a facelift of the Forester, it's not a brand new model, but uh, at least we do have a uh, hybrid in this case. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop here and let's check out what is new when it comes to the design of the new Forester. So the previous, uh, as I said in the beginning, Subaru to me has not really been, uh, you know, it, it's a hit or miss when it comes to their exterior design because they have had a bunch of cool concepts, but when it comes to the production cars, they don't necessarily look beautiful, but I think this update is a huge step forward because we have less styling now, as you can see in the front end. This is the 2023 model up here and the brand new 2025 down there. You, ha you have this up angle on the headlights, very typical LEDs, uh, daytime run lights for Subaru with this uh, design right here. And then you have this wing cutting in very abruptly and harshly into the body with this very static looking chamfer. We have a pretty normal traditional looking grille. Overall, it's not a bad looking design, but it's still not a beautiful looking design either. So I think the update that they did here for the 2025 model year, it just becomes a lot more clean. For example, this wing that we have up here is now gone, so remove this. That is definitely something that I would say to the designers, we can't have any sort of ch hard chamfers like that. Why not just smooth everything out? And you can see that that's exactly what they did in this area. The lower section is also a lot cleaner now in the 2025 model year. And I said, we do have uh, the trend of the decade implemented in, <laughs> in the front end of the new Forester. You can see that right here because look at this. What do we have here? I'm actually not sure if we can call this a proper uh, bumper headlight because it's not separated from the daytime run light with some body piece right here It's actually one single unit But the headlight itself sits down here and then you have the new daytime run, run light up in uh, up above and I do like that we have almost a clean line where the graphic starts from up top when it goes down. We also have a brand new grill. This is one detail that I'm not so sure about because this looks extremely complex down here. Just look at all the details that's going on here. We have one cut line here, we have one horizontal bar going here, another design for this bar which has some angles on it, and then you have a third upswing down here with these angles at the very bottom. But at least it's gloss black in this specific trim level. Again, I do think it looks a lot better than the current Forester, specifically with these angles now being removed. So we have upswings for the headlight and then a horizontal grille. Now we have horizontal headlights as well. It just looks more stately, in my opinion. You also have a nice integration of the fog lights down at the bottom with this chamfer. Now a triangular fog light at the bottom. Not sure why this, what, what that detail is doing there. It doesn't look like it has any sort of function. Maybe it's a radar or a parking sensor integration or something like that. But again, this is something that I would probably just want to smooth over again and make it even more simplified than what we have in here. But overall, the front end looks way better and a lot more grown up than the uh, current Forester. Looking at it from a side view, we also have major changes in the side profile, even though they retain this upright boxy design that I like about the Forester, because look at the headroom this dude has in here. He, has, he can have two heads on top of him and he can still fit in the Forester. It's a fantastic interior space with this design, even though it doesn't look too sporty, but that's not what Subaru is about. And that's what I also what I like about Subaru, that they keep these sort of traditional looking proportions because we don't have a 80, uh, 20 split between the height of the greenhouse and the height of the rest of the body like we have in the majority of cars today. And what that does is creates a much more sporty design but this is all about functionality. So we cleaned everything up. We had a pretty complex shoulder line. I can't even see where it goes. We have one uh, chamfer going here. It sort of feels like it disappears here. Then we have another sharp line here in the front end and then another sharp line cutting very slightly into the corner of the of the tail light. So it looks pretty complex, just like we have in the front end. And they did the exact same thing, philosophy here in the uh, side view that they did in the front. They simplified everything and they added some very harsh creases 
above both axle and I actually think this suits the uh, Forester because it makes it feel a little more rugged. You also have a brand new lower side graphics here with some plastic which I, again I think it suits the Forester to have this because it, again it adds to this off-road feel that we want to have in this design. We also have two interesting details here. So we have all-wheel drive uh, badge on this, what is this? A B C D pillar. So this, the D pillar is uh, sectioned out with this area graphic, black graphic that says all wheel drive on. You also have the same detail in the A pillar. So black, small little tiny touch by the designer to cut off the A pillar in that way, which is, I guess, totally fine. It kind of looks like the, uh, the roof and the A pillar up here, the greenhouse top part of it floats in the air now because it doesn't have a base to or a connection to the rest of the body but again it creates a more interesting looking design in my opinion i do believe that these are the 19 inch wheels but the wheel design looks totally fine for me it looks classy and looks like it suits this overall design and as you can see we have a brand new design for the taillights as well so let's have a look at that right now so looking at the rear end up top it feels like looking at it from a rear end this is where i feel that the forester looked the most dated it looks like an old design that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad design it just feels like it was time for an upgrade and i think the new one again looks so much better even though this reminds me a lot of a ford escape i do believe is the car i'm thinking about specifically with these taillights that we have but ford also makes very good looking small mid-size suvs they did the same type of philosophy like we have all around the car here simplify the design not sure if we have full led uh, taillights in this case this has been a uh, part or a detail that subaru has uh, saved a lot of money on uh, if you mass produce a car, they, they usually have just light bulbs for the taillights and the headlights, except for the daytime run lights. So I'm not sure if they decided to go, in this case, splurge a little bit on the lighting and add full LED lighting in this case. You also have a brand new bumper that feels like it sits higher than it does on the 2023. So it brings up this rear end a little more and less of this minivan style that we had, in my opinion, for the 2023. Uh, Forester. It has this more of a Miniman vibe to it. One detail I want to change here is either we have one pipe here, you can see one exhaust pipes, but we also have a section cut out on the other side for what looks to be another exhaust. So either we have two options here. We can either have add another pipe on this side or we just remove this all together and just make it flat and smooth and not have it look like there is supposed to be a dual exhaust on this design. Now last but not least, let's jump into the interior and check out what is new here. So what I like about Subaru is that they kept for the 2025 model, we still have the analog cluster that we have in the 2023 model. And you can see that they removed this cool little display up here. We have some off-road uh, settings and information. We don't have that anymore in the 2025, which is sort of uh, a little bit sad because I think this was a cool uh, extra to have in the Forester. But overall, you do have the brand new 11 point uh, something inch infotainment screen. We don't have physical buttons for the climate control settings except for the temperature, which we have in a lot of new Subaru models. But at least we do have this lower section down here, which is always static. So this doesn't go anywhere. No matter what you do on the screen, this piece down here is always going to be put in place so you always have easy easy access to your um, climate control settings i am not so sure i've talked about this when i reviewed subarus in 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 person that this screen just f it looks a little cheap i think they could have made this better and not have it be so simply put together not just with the in uh, integration which is decent in this case not horrible but i do want to have better integrations of the buttons here and the feel for this buttons i want to have a little bit higher quality in the feel of the buttons but look at this area they added some nice textures to the uh, passenger side where where before we just have this seam going down looking pretty clean still but i do definitely prefer the more static look that we have in the 2025 model year and in addition to that looking down here we do have an aux output a usb-c and a usb looks like this is the wireless charging pad looking fantastic this is the cbt gearbox and looking here if we have any paddles i can't see any paddles maybe they're too small but you can have this uh, cbt with some paddles and shift manually if you want to and as i said when i test drove this 
it works pretty well. It makes it a lot more fun than your average CVT gearbox, that's for sure. Steering wheel looks pretty much identical like the 2023 model. Yeah, they didn't make any changes to that, which is totally fine. It looks normal. You have a couple of buttons on, the, on both spokes, as you can see, and a small little display in the middle. So overall, a great update by Subaru for the Forester. I think the exterior is really what sets this apart, in my opinion, from the 2023 model year. And in addition to that, you also get a hybrid if you're willing to wait a year because that one comes out for the 2026 model year.